making sure schools are safe and compliant with recent legislation. Teachers and administrators came together to discuss the specifics. And family and friends are gathering in Breathitt County to remember a longtime county official who died. Scattered rain chances return this evening, but sunshine returns by your Wednesday. I'll have those details right now at 530. Dedicated to Southern and Eastern Kentucky, this is WYMT Mountain News at 530. Good evening, I'm Steve Hensley. This morning in Frankfurt, state and local education leaders met to discuss recent improvements aimed at keeping Kentucky students safe in the classroom. Krista Frost shares how this collective effort will lead to safer schools for years to come. The School Safety and Resiliency Act, or more commonly referred to as Senate Bill 1. Most of us know it. Its goal is to enhance school safety across the state so we could be prepared in any situation. I, I went to Marshall County High School in Western Kentucky, so we were really close to the Heath incident when that happened back in the 90s. So this teacher knows too well how important it is for students to be safe while they just try to get ahead in the world. It's hard to think about the things our students must feel and think when we do lockdown drills and when they see so many stories in the news like California last week. And so it is a scary time. That's why lawmakers and community members met today to talk about the changes which will come to schools in the state in the coming years. Changes including making security upgrades to school buildings, something that's estimated to cost the state at least $18 million. Hiring school resource officers more than $71 million, and also hiring counselors for students roughly $140 million. Numbers shared at a subcommittee meeting discussing safety in this bill moving forward. While the specifics are still being worked out, some of these teachers say they know what it's like to have a student, a loved one, so close to this danger. My little nephew um, was there when the shooting took place last year, and it was an awful, awful day. He, uh, I was trying to get a hold of him that morning, finally got a hold of him, he was safe. Krista Frost, WYMT Mountain News. Subcommittee members also heard from school leaders about providing staff training, creating a way to have trauma resources available to students, and the need for long-term commitment from lawmakers. Leaders in the horse racing industry met today at Keeneland in Lexington to discuss ways to protect the sport following several incidents. At least three dozen horses died at Santa Anita in California this year, and here in the bluegrass, nine horses died at Keeneland during the spring and fall meets. The new Thoroughbred Safety Coalition will work together to develop new reforms and to ensure the safety of horses and jockeys. They will create new safety, medication, operational, and integrity guidelines that will be used at tracks across the country. A Laurel County man admitted to causing a deadly crash that killed his mother. Chris Francis pleaded guilty to multiple charges, including second-degree manslaughter. Francis was driving on the wrong side of the road when he hit another car head-on. Police said blood work showed he was high on meth at the time of the crash. Francis's mother, Holly Francis, was a passenger in the car. She died of her injuries. The other driver and two young children were also hurt. Sentencing for Francis is set for Monday. A murder trial is underway in Whitley County. Chris Lowe and Lori Matty are both charged with the murder of 36-year-old Michelle Marlowe. Deputies say the two beat her with a stick. It happened in July of 2017. Deputies say they found Marlowe dead inside a home on Old Mud Creek Road. A trail of blood led them to the victim and the suspects. Lowe and Matty are also facing unlawful imprisonment charges. In Pulaski County, a man is facing charges after police say his five-year-old son with autism showed up to school with bruises. Somerset police arrested Gideon Wesley yesterday. According to his recitation, the child knocked a gun rack off the wall and the child would not get up when Wesley asked him to. Wesley then pulled him up by the neck of his shirt and dragged him down a hallway. The child has bruises on his face, neck, and ears. Wesley is charged with criminal abuse. Troopers found a body today at a home in Harlan County. Troopers were called to a possible fight at a home in the Everts community. When they got to the home, they found no evidence of any fight, and they found a man dead on the front porch. Speaking with family members and neighbors of the area, they advised that there was this subject that's deceased possibly had several health issues. In relation, relation to those health issues, troopers at the scene said the coroner believes his death was due to natural causes.
you were out and about a little bit earlier this morning. You saw some sunshine, and now we're dealing with those clouds and a little bit of those rain chances now as well. We'll go ahead and take you up to Buffalo Mountain here in Perry County. You're looking at those very gloomy conditions across mountains as that sun is setting. Even looking into downtown Whitesburg, looking beautiful with those lights on, but still dealing with those mostly cloudy skies, and they're seeing temperatures at 48 degrees right now. Looking at those temperatures, though, for all of us here in the mountains, upper 40s to lower 50s, still 51 in Hazard, 49 in Jackson, 48 in Pikeville, 45 down into London, 43 in Somerset, a little bit on that cooler side, and we're starting to see those rain chances and those clouds that have been increasing over the past couple of hours, so it could be a little bit soggy at times. So if you are headed out this evening, maybe headed out to dinner, definitely would pack that rain gear. Pinpoint Doppler looking a little bit on the soggy side, seeing some yellow starting to pop up. If you're looking into Jackson, Clay County, a little bit into Leslie, so those those rain showers could be some little heavy downpours at times. So as you're headed out tonight, make sure to have that rain gear handy. We're into the right around those upper 40s to lower 50s as we head into the next couple of hours. We'll start to get cooler as we head a little bit later into this evening. But what does tomorrow look like? I'll have those details coming up in just a little bit. All right, Paige, thank you. The visitation is underway right now for former longtime Breathitt County Coroner George Griffith. Family and friends say his service to the community extended beyond his work duties. Griffith volunteered at the Bethany Christian Mission Center, making dinners and singing for fundraisers. Although he was a busy man, his wife says she would not have it any other way. Well, I really didn't mind it because I was glad he had the opportunity that he could serve the people and let them see what kind of man he really was. His funeral is tomorrow at 1 p.m. at the Breathitt Funeral Home. We'll have the full story tonight at 11. Nearly 100 students stepped out of the classroom for a hands-on learning experience today in Hazard. A STEM camp at Hazard Community and Technical College allows students to take classes about cosmetology, carpentry, welding, auto tech, computer-aided design, and drafting, just to name a few. Ruth Bentley, a teacher at Lecture Central, says her students are always excited when getting to learn in this type of environment. They just light up. They get to tell everybody what they did during the day, and then we get to come together and we get to share those experiences. Um, and actually, we will discuss how we can make it better or what new things we learned. Bentley says this type of learning also gets her students thinking about their futures. Six schools attended this year's camp. Dollywood announced children born in 2015 or 2016 can now visit Dollywood for free all season long. The Pre-K Imagination Season Pass is a special 35th anniversary offer inspired by Dolly Parton's Imagination Library. The library aims to introduce young children to the joy of learning through books. The pass can be used for the remainder of the 2019 season and all of the 2020 season. The deadline to register your child is January 5th, 2020. Coming up on Mountain News at 5.30, an impeachment hearing doubleheader on Capitol Hill. We'll share the competing testimony over the president's conduct with Ukraine. Temperatures looking pretty nice as we head into your Wednesday and into your Thursday, but rain will bring those temperatures back down. It will get cooler by the time we head into your Sunday. I'll have all those details coming up in just a little bit.